Welcome back to the GSMC uh, Baseball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We're going into our second segment here, which is talking about the American League Power Rankings for this so far in the year, uh, from my opinion. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get run in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get into our second segment of the day here. So yeah, um, it's basically what it sounds like, the American League Power Rankings so far in the year. We're a little bit into the year. I'd say it's most teams have played around 20 games, give or take. So, uh, you know, it is the end of the week, and uh, it's my second time doing this. The first time was just kind of for fun, you know. I mean, we're only a few games into the season, and uh, there were some crazy teams in the top of the divisions and all that. So right now, it's kind of evened out a little bit. A lot of surprises still. A lot of things we expect to happen still. So I just wanted to give my uh, two cents on it and just tell you my, what my power rankings are. So, yeah. We're going to start off, uh, we're going to go from 15 to 1, and let's get into it. So, at number 15 for the American League, I have, at no surprise, the Chicago White Sox. Now, I think it's pretty clear that the White Sox and the A's are both in contention for the worst team in the American League by roster. I think both teams are pretty horrible, and yeah, so I think it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't that hard to uh, decide who was 15 this week because of the records, but yeah, I do have the White Sox 15, they're 3 and 15. Um, they just lost a bunch of people to injury, including Yohan Moncada and Luis Robert. So, I don't... Uh, just Yohan Moncada, actually, sorry. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not good. They just lost some of their players to injury anyways. Kind of easy to, to say here. They're, they're not good. So, we're going to move on from them. We, we, pre- we pretty much know they're one of the worst teams in baseball. Not really a surprise. At number 14, I have, of course, the Oakland A's. Now, the A's are 8-11, and 11, which is shocking to everyone believe me it's shocking to me as well but i still have to have them at 14 i mean their team is still not good there's really nothing exciting about this if you are an ace fan i mean i don't know what there is to look forward to right now i mean s ruiz was just brought back up which is a good which was a nice thing for you guys but this roster is so bad the team's still bad the organization's still bad so i do have you guys at 14 even though you are 8 and 11 I expect you will come back down to earth pretty shortly. I don't think you'll have a good record whatsoever. Not that 8-11 and 11 is, but 8-11 and 11 for the A's would be like the Dodgers having 40 wins. So it's a, it's a big surprise. At number 13, it's number 13 now, I have, it's basically where the real power ranking starts. We all know what 15 to 14 would be. I have a big surprise here, which is, unfortunately, the Minnesota Twins. Now, I was really high on the Twins like a lot of people. I thought they were clearly one of the top five AL team, uh, top four AL teams, um, in the of course in the American League. I thought they were really really good. They had a lot of great pieces, but injury bug has hit them hard. It has hit them really really hard. Uh, I mean, right now you have Kyle Farmer making having significant playing time at shortstop, which not something you really want if you're trying to compete in the AL Central. So you have that. You have had, you've Carlos Ray has been hurt, of course. That's where Kyle Farmer comes in. Royce Lewis has been hurt. Your pitching hasn't been the best so far. Your bullpen's been hurt, and it's been, again, not the best. So it's really just injuries right now for the Twins, and I think the worry for them is can they stay afloat? They're 6-11 and 11 currently. Can they stay afloat? Can they get to 500? And then once everyone comes back, I do think they'll be fine. I think the the lineup is great with stars like Correa and Buxton who need to stay healthy. Buxton might just get hurt eventually, so we'll have to see, but... I think you, you you guys have to stay healthy, but right now it is unfortunate for the Twins. I still think they're a really great team. It's just unfortunate how things have fallen for them, and I do have them here at number 13. At number 12, I also have a big surprise, which is the Houston Astros. Now, I think the Astros deserve to be here right now. I think it's I think it's a little different from the Twins. As the Twins, I see little problems for the Astros, I kind of see big problems. The Twins, like the Astros, have injuries. But the Astros have more than that. Yeah, they have, first of all, way more injuries. You're getting Verlander back today, which is exciting. He's going to start against the Nationals, so we'll be tuning into that and probably making a short on it later in the day. So if you want to uh, see that, go ahead. But the Astros have more um, injury problems, I guess, which I do have them above the Twins, Yes, but at the same time, um, you know, you have guys like Verlander, like Valdez, like Luis Garcia, 
Lance McCullers, Jose Arquiti being hurt, Josh Hader's been bad, your bullpen length is a problem. So the Astros have a lot of problems, like the Twins. That's why they're at number 12. Um, I think the Twins might be able to come back from it soon. I'm not sure about the Astros, and I'm not sure when the injuries are going to be fully healed. But I do have them at number 12 just because I think they're kind of the same in kind of the same situations right now. And when they're fully healthy, I do have the Astros over them. But it's kind of a it's kind of a swap right now. I think that um, you can put them in any order. I wouldn't be mad. But, yeah, that's where I have them right now. At number 11, I have the Seattle Mariners, who are 9 and 10. Now, the Mariners have been really disappointing for me so far in this year, almost 20 games in. I mean, your pitching, your young pitching that I expected to be the forefront of your team has really not been that good. Guys like Luis Castillo, um, George Kirby have really, really struggled. So I think that was, that's been the big deal. Your offense honestly hasn't been that bad, but Julio's been struggling, I will say as well. Julio struggling is definitely one of the bigger things I would worry for. So there are just some, simply players underperforming right now for the Mariners. And that is why I think they are 9 and 10, and that's why I have them at number 11. So I think they might be getting a little bit unlucky. And once these guys come back to earth and play up to their potential, I think the Mariners could be a really, really good team, and I'm excited about watching them. So, yeah, that's my overall thoughts on the Mariners. I do have them at number 11, but I expect them to climb up this list pretty fast. I had them much higher than this on my uh, ra- rankings before, so, yeah. At number 10, I do have the Boston Red Sox, who are 500, and number 10 spot are 10 and 10. So the Red Sox have been the surprise of the year so far. They started off doing really, really well. Granted, they had some easy series. Again, you know, they had played the A's, so they did have some easy series there. But at the same time, their young pitching was doing really well. Their offense is doing really well. But the injury bug has really, really destroyed them right now. Tyler O'Neill was just placed in the seven-day I.O. with a concussion. Rafael Devers has been placed on the I.O. with an injury. Garrett Whitlock, one of their shining starters so far this year, a guy who's really... You know, shown himself to be a good rising young starter so far, at least. Just got placed in the injured list with an oblique strain. You had Lucas Gilito, of course, being out for the year before it even started. So that was another thing. So the injury bug is really at the Red Sox hard, and they were overperforming. But at the same time, um, I do have them at number 10 just because of that. I don't think they're as good as they were before. And the injuries now... I do think they're going to start following this list and falling down, down, down. So we'll be watching them and seeing what does happen there. At number nine, I have the Detroit Tigers. Kind of a fall from grace here. I had them at top three in my last AO Power Rankings, which was two weeks ago. But they started off really hot, 5-0. and oh, But since then, they were, they're were 5-9, and nine, and uh, they are 10-9 and, 10 and nine now for the season. So they've come back down to earth a little bit. I don't think they're as good as going 5-0, and oh, but I also don't think they're as bad as going 5-9. and nine. I think they're a team I, that is a little bit above 500, probably a team that is going to have 84, 85 wins. I don't know if that'll be good enough to make the playoffs in the AL, but that's the type of team I do think the Tigers are. I think they're just a pretty good team. Nothing nothing extraordinary, not a great team, but just a pretty good team. So, yeah, um, they have fallen a little bit in nine. I have some teams with worse records above them, including number nine, and including number eight, but I think Tigers can get back up here. I still think they're a good team. It's just the rough streak they've been on right now is a little bit rough. Obviously, that's why it's a rough streak. So we'll have to see how they come back from that, and we'll have to see uh, what happens there. At number eight, I have the Angels at nine and ten. Now, I think a lot of people are going to question themselves as why are the Angels at eight when they're nine and ten? They're also the Angels you know we know about them and their team and who they've lost so you know this could be me being a little bit high in them but i thought about this a lot and this is one of the main things i wanted to highlight highlight i think this was one of my more out of the box uh selections here for the angels being at number eight so for them being at number eight my rationale was the offense has been really really good mike trout has been on fire Anthony Rendon hasn't even been that bad. I mean, he's not been good, but he's been getting some nice hits there. Your young hitters have been performing like Logan O'Hoppy, Zach Neto. Your pitching has been bad, but I think Mike Trout having a resurgence and finally getting back to the Mike Trout he has been is really, really great for you guys. I think it helps your team a lot. So I do have the Anders at number eight. I think they could surprise some people with what they do this season. Do I still think they're a playoff team? No. Do I think they're even they're even going to be close to a wild card team? No, but... I think they could surprise some people. I think they could finish over 500, especially if Trout keeps doing what he's doing. I think he's really just, 
he's really what defines this team, Mike Trout, and how he does perform. So I'll be watching him, and however he does perform, that's how I think the Angels will perform. So, yeah, that's what I'm watching here. At number seven, I have the Toronto Blue Jays at 10 and 9. For the... Uh, for the Blue Jays at number seven, it was pretty simple. I think this they're a really good team. Their pitching has come in handy. Kevin Gosman, once he gets back fully from that injury and starts performing like Kevin Gosman again, they're going to be even better. Their offense has been good. Uh, they just had a nice series against the Yankees where they beat them. So, yeah, I think the Angel, the Blue Jays have been doing really well, and I think they're a really good team, and I think seven is the, is the perfect spot for them. I think... Really, seven and five. I'm okay with any order for these guys for these teams. I think any order is honestly perfectly fine. So, I'll uh, I'll tell you what I, the teams I have here, and then you know you can really decide who you want. But that's what the order I had was. At number six, I had the Tampa Bay Rays at eleven and nine. Who are eleven and nine? They are my number six team. So this is where uh, the playoff teams would would uh, would start. So. For the Rays, the reason I had them here at number six was I think their pitching's done really well. Zach Eflin is amazing. I think Ryan Pepio is going to be awesome after that. They're getting some young pit. They're getting some pitchers back as well as season goes on, so that deals into it. Ahmed um, Rosario has been great since coming over the Rays. Their stars have been performing. Randy's been great. Isaac Paredes has been great. So overall, I just think the Rays are a really good team right now. I think some of the issues I had with them have kind of gone away. I think if Ahmed can continue playing like this, he can be the guy that fills in for Wander Franco at short. I'm not sure if it's going to be full-time or a long-term, but that is something uh, that is a positive there. Brandon Lau was placed on the injured list. So that's a negative, but you're going to have Camarino come up soon, I think, and he's going to be really, really good. I would have him up now already, but again, the Rays know more about his situation than, me, than I do. So Overall, I'm really happy with the Rays, with what they're doing right now. I think they have a lot more going for them as season goes on as well. So, yeah, uh, I think they're a great team, and I think they're going to keep getting better, and that's why I have them at number six. At number five, I have the Texas Rangers at 11-9. and nine. I think the Rangers have a lot going for them. I think their offense is amazing, of course. Wyatt Langford, while he has struggled a little bit, I still think he's going to be really, really good and ended up running away with that AO a Rookie of the Year, so... I think the offense has extraordinary pieces. I think the pitching has been solid, a little bit better than I expected. So, eleven and nine. I think five is a really good spot for the for this uh, Rangers team. I think this is where they probably would be, anyways. So, yeah, a really good job by them, and having a really good season so far. So, in a, in a disappointing AOS so far, with the with the Astros being six and fourteen, the A's being the A's, the Angels being under five hundred still. I think the Astros have uh, the the Rangers have proven themselves to be just just as good still and kind of not letting any of this get into their head moving into the top four we have at number four a surprise team the kansas city royals now the royals have been really really good they swept the astros who again we talked about have some problems and are not the astros of the past but are still a really good team the royals have had a lot of great contributors i mean your rotation has been great cole reagans brady singer michael waka Seth Lugo, I think that might be one of the better top fours in the league right now. Offense has come together with Salvador Perez playing really well. Vinny Pascantino, Bobby Witt, Nelson Velasquez has been a stud. Um, Michael, Garcia's ha Michael Garcia has been great. MJ Melendez. So I think the Royals have had a lot, a lot of great pieces. They've been a really great team. Their bullpen has been nice as well. Guys like Chris Stratton, James MacArthur, Will Smith. So the Royals have a lot going for them right now. I think they're a really, really good team. And, yeah, I'm really happy for them, and they've been really, really good, and I don't think having them at four right now is a stretch. At three, I have a team in their same division, the Al Central, the Cleveland Guardians at number three, 13 and six. I don't think anyone expects the Guardians to be doing what they are doing right now. I mean, they have been really, really good. The offense has been firing on all cylinders. It's been really nice. The young hitters have been performing. The pitchers, even after Bieber has been has gone down with Tommy John, have been doing really, really well. So, yeah, the Guardians have just been firing on all cylinders. They've been great. They've surprised a lot of people, including myself. I really have loved what they've been doing so far. So, yeah, just a great, great season for them right now. And they're at number three, so I think that's, I think that's pretty great for them. 
Now, number two and number one, we already know who it is. It's going to be the Yankees and the Orioles. We can f f uh, put them any order we want, but I have the Yankees at two right now, 13-6. and six. You know, they got off to an incredible start, but they've kind of fallen back down to earth a little bit. I mean, still 13-6 and six is incredible, but they lost a series against the Blue Jays um, just before. They've been struggling with the offense. The last game against the Blue Jays was nice. You know, having that Aaron Judge single and the, and the extra innings coming back after blowing that lead was really good. But they've had some days where the offense hasn't been performing. The pitching has been less than stellar. So they do have some, some risks right now and some things to worry about. But they're still 13-6, and six and they're still pretty great. That's why I did put them at number two, and I have the Orioles jumping them for the number one spot. The Orioles have been so good. I mean, they've been, they're been they 7-2 in their last nine, 12-6 and six overall in the year. They're a great team. Coburn Burns has been an amazing addition so far, has been that true ace that they're looking for. Jackson Holiday, while he hasn't gotten off to a good start, I still believe in him. I still think he's going to be a great, great player for them. So, yeah, the Orioles have a lot going for them right now. A lot of great young talent, a lot of great young pitchers, which is something I lacked before. I think Coburn Burns, that addition just has been such a game changer, such an organization changer, honestly, as well. So, yeah, the Orioles have been really great so far. And that is why I do have them at number one in my American League Power Rankings. So that is our segment two here, talking about the American League Power Rankings. We're going to our third segment, which is going to be talking about the National League Power Rankings. And um, just, you know, same thing I did for the American League. So, yeah, we'll see you after the break, and uh, we'll talk about it then. So thanks, and bye. Looking for your daily?